Okay, I'm in my Active Directory Users and Computers. My domain controller is dansgames.com here, let's say, using this as an example um, domain controller for these tutorials. And I'm in my lab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going into my OU here for server. I've made a couple of OUs based on classes that I teach. So I've got a Linux one, I've got a security one, I've got a server one. And under the server OU, you can see that I've got a Windows 2008 and then a Windows 7 OUs. So I'll click on the Windows 7 OU and in there I've got um, computers and users. And I want to make a group here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new group and let's make a group. And so following convention I'm going to say group will be let's say G students right so G students and then I'm gonna decide what do I want to do with this group do I want to make it a security group or a distribution group distribution group um, is good for um, mail lists trying to uh, have a, a list a mail group that you can use for email but I'm gonna want a security group here and I'm gonna make it a global group um, because I only have one domain controller I only have one domain in, in this forest, right? I only have one tree, and that is the dansgames.com domain. So I think a, um, a global group will be fine. Security group type, and I'll click OK. And so then there's my group, right? And now I can assign users to that group. I can assign um, uh, Windows 7 users. I'll go in here. And in the users, I've got student, student. And I want to assign him. I want to assign the test one here, student. I want to assign him to that group. So I'll say add to a group. And and then the group I just created was G students. And I'll click check names. And it's there. And I'll say click OK. And it was successful. So once again now, in my OU. In my Windows 7 OU, I've got a group, uh, G students, and if I wanted to, I could create another group, let's say new group, and I'll do the group name, so G teachers, right? So I could have G teachers, I could have G managers to manage the um, group for the class, and students and managers right so I can say advanced students or G uh, graduate students I'll just say managers all right and click OK and now I've got an, another group and so um, that's a good start for in my example domain once again on yours you're gonna probably want to have you'll have a different types of OU's and you'll have different names for your groups but it, the concepts will still apply under computers, I've got this image to PC. I could also add that to the group. So I'll say add to a group. And so G students. And check names. Perfect. And click OK. And so that computer is also part of the group. Let's click on a Windows 7 now. And I'm going to double click on this group. You can see the members in the group, right? members of this group is not member of any other groups so but it does have two members now it has a computer as a member of the group and the student the test student one as a member of the group so I'm just playing around with this so under my Windows 7 uh, OU I've got a uh, G students and a G managers um, groups right and I've put my users and my computers from these other OUs under Windows 7 into um, these groups, but that might not be the best way to do it. So let's take a look here. So I've got under server, under my server OU, I have another OU called Windows 2008 for Windows 2008 classes. So if I go in here, I have nothing in here, right? So instead of making a uh, OUs of users and computers under Windows 2008, I'm not going to make any um, any child OUs under Windows 2008, but I am going to make a group. 
So I'll just make a group now. I'll try to do that again. So new group. And this time I'm going to call it um, G for group, right? And then I'm going to say G win 2008 students, right? So G win group Windows 2008 students, right? And put dash in there. See if I can do that. And security group is good because I can put um, I, I can put uh, permissions on a security group. And global's good. I don't need universal, right? That's just going to slow down the system. I don't. Need, I only have one domain, so it's it's uh, only one domain controller. So this would be appropriate. All right, so group Windows 2008 students, click OK. And there's the group for that. And I'll make another one, new group, call it G win 2008 dash admin, All right? Click OK. So now I have two groups, one for administrators, and one for students under my 2008 OU which I'll use for one of my classes or something like that, right? For this one, Windows 7, I've got two OUs underneath, one for users and one for computers. And I'm not sure if that was overkill or not. It's only by experience and by having a more experience with um, OUs and with Windows 2008 and Active Directory, am I going to find out, you know, the best way to organize this and to uh, distribute my permissions and to do all this. So this is something that, that I'm going to have to practice with and play with quite a bit. So I decided to go back and now under my server OU, my Windows 2008 OU, I've got two groups, one for students, one for administrators, under group Windows 2008. So I went back into Windows 7, deleted my other two groups, and I made group GWIN7 students, GWIN7 admin. Um, so I can have two groups, one for students, one for administrators, under Windows 7. And I've still got the users and computers OUs um, under Windows 7 so that if I, if I need those, if, um, you know, if I'm going to attach uh, group policy to those, those might become in handy. I'm not quite sure yet, but I have two um, OUs to play with that I can work with and um, see how the benefits of Active Directory by planning it out this way.